Nights into Dreams Revisited, a game of many faces. I've already given my reasons for considering Nights into Dreams both a gaming masterpiece and a great score attacker. Unfortunately, I failed to give detailed reasons as to what makes Nights such an excellent example of the subgenre. This video is both an apology to you, the viewers, and my addendum. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at Knights' multi-tier scoring system and gameplay features. But first, allow me to apologize for my mistake last video when I highlighted the wrong way to play Knights. I should have specified in terms of score attacking. Part of the brilliance of Knights is that there is no wrong way to play it, beyond getting a game over of course. Faithful to the nature of dreams, it conforms to the player's method. It can be a straight lace, get to the goal and beat the ball style action platformer, or arcade style score attacker, or a game for those who just want to fly around performing aerial acrobatics while looking cool, or even explore the vibrant dreamscapes on foot, interacting with the ever changing game world with absolutely no interest in finishing the game proper. The way I see it, the only thing Nights into Dreams is missing is a sandbox option to freely roam or fly indefinitely to your heart's content in your choice of stage without that pesky alarm clock or nightmare and enemies to impede you in any way. In essence, a time attack without the timer. Would have made for a great unlockable in my opinion. But all that having been said, if you're in it to score, there are very specific and effective ways to do it. So let's demystify Knights' elaborate yet simple scoring system. The key to amassing higher scores in Knights is utilizing links and beating bosses quickly. The latter speaks for itself, but by defeating bosses fast enough, it's possible to literally double your base score prior to the battle. So here the trick becomes learning each foe's patterns, weaknesses, and devising strategies for a quick victory. The link system is more obvious, immediate, and in-depth. Similar to combos in a fighting game, quickly chaining certain series of actions, like collecting orbs, stars, and passing through rings, will generate links. The longer the link, the more points received. Simple to grasp, tough to get great at. But with practice, you can make 30 plus links without breaking a sweat, and it can become as enthralling as it is challenging. Like any great score attacker, it all comes down to chiseling one's skill and timing each movement with the utmost precision. There's also an item that grants you bonus points for pulling off a series of aerial acrobatics within a given time limit, and there are tricks to exploit this to amass even more points. How you go about destroying the idea capture also affects what bonuses you earn, so Knights becomes a game of strategy as well as action. To say nothing of the hidden areas and invisible items only revealed through creating vortexes or vortices by para-looping and hitting certain triggers. There's a lot of game underneath what at first glance may appear to some to be a very shallow surface. This is why I said in the previous video that Journey of Dreams is inadequate as a score attacker when compared to Into Dreams. More linear in design, it offers fewer ways to score points and replacing the idea device with keys that force you to progress to the next segment whether you're ready to or not, as well as the inclusion of more gimmick driven and filler levels renders the game more restrictive overall while also reducing it to simply being yet another get to the goal affair, something its predecessor successfully and defiantly avoided. The best and worst aspect of Knights is its unapologetically subliminal presentation. The very same element that frustrates and confounds so many is simultaneously precisely what makes Knights a masterpiece among games. It never goes out of its way to tell players how to play or even point out just how many ways of doing so are readily available. Few games attempt to do what Knights does, and even fewer succeed at it, creating gameplay capable of catering to a myriad of game styles and genres harmoniously. Thus, it is ultimately up to each of us to decide and determine how to play the experience that is Knights into Dreams. Big thank you goes again to the original developers and players of this game. Thank you for keeping it alive and keeping it in people's memories and hearts. And hopefully Sega has not completely forgotten about it because it's part of what made them so great back in the day. Thanks for watching. Take care and hopefully see you soon.